Well, for more on that and also the impact of artificial intelligence, particularly after this week's talks at the World Economic Forum, I'm joined now live by Stephen Gould, who's a professor at the Australian National University, particularly in computer science. Well, Stephen, it's great to have you on the program this afternoon. I mean, looking at Brent's story just then and the surge and, and, and the, the thirst from companies to have access to data centres, it, it does raise that interesting point around power consumption and power use and whether enough will be left for consumers. I mean, here in Melbourne, there's been data centres built right across the city. I'm sure that's a, a thing that's shared nationwide. Um, yeah, well, thank, thank you for having me, Simon. And, and, and you're right, these, these data centres, um, they're, they're storing a, an enormous amount of data and, and that data is just growing and growing on, on a daily basis. I mean, our, our lives have now uh, moved to be digital and to be online. Um, and, and we like to keep records of, of everything we do. So the amount of videos and photos and, um, and digital records is, is just growing enormously. So, so the two big things there are, um, yeah, how, how do we power these uh, these data centres and, and, and how do we keep them cool um, and how do we make sure that that data is available and we can we can distribute it as, as, as we need. Um, of course, my, my area of, of speciality is, is artificial intelligence and for artificial intelligence, mm. having that data available is uh, incredibly important. It's, it's the fuel on which these artificial intelligence algorithms um, are based. Speaking of fuel, I mean, in Brent's story, then it goes into AI requiring much more power or capacity than your standard computer. Uh, what challenges does AI have when it comes to that? And I guess, as we've seen, uh, smartphones and, and mobile phones getting smaller and smaller, do you think that'll be overcome even in years to come with AI? Uh, yeah, so certainly there's a lot of research being done on uh, on, on the two different ends of AI. So, so there's there's sort of the big end, the AI that runs uh, within data centres, uh, and so those are things like uh, like ChatGPT, um, where you know you, you you can you can use all of the data that's available within within that data centre. Uh, but as you mentioned, our, our mobile phones are, are actually very power efficient, and there is a lot of AI that's being pushed into into our mobile phones. So. The fact that you can open your phone now with um, face recognition, um, that's an AI technology that, that's running on your phone that's recognising that it's you. Um, there's speech recognition that's partially done on the mobile phone, partially done, done in the cloud. And so I think we're going to see uh, a, you know, a, a lot more uh, effort in, and there is research being done in bringing down the power costs um, of these artificial intelligence algorithms. What are the big challenges, particularly with AI and and, and privacy? Uh, yeah, so, so so that's 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 a very big question uh, with AI. So um, you know, we, we we've seen a lot of um, AI algorithms being developed in uh, in the last few years that that just consume um, as, as much data as as they've got uh, available, and those those algorithms then put online like ChatGPT, and it's not clear. Um, whether those algorithms leak some of the data on which they're trained. Um, and then as we use those algorithms, so if we go online and, and we use, uh, for example, ChatGPT to, to generate some text for us, um, we're giving uh, prompts and data to, to OpenAI to, to enable them to do that. So it's very important that the, the big tech companies or, or any company that's running an AI service um, has policies around how to, how to ensure data privacy um, and how to make sure that that, that data is, is only used in the ways that, um, that, that the person using the AI intends for them to be used. So, Stephen, I guess the next challenges, that was something that the World Economic Forum would, was dealing with. Uh, what, did you observe much out of those discussions this week? And can you talk to us why uh, they're so important, so crucial? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm not an economist, I'm, I'm a scientist, um, so, but, but, but I have been mm. watching what's going on at the World Economic Forum. Um, and it's no surprise that, that there's a lot of interest uh, both by big tech companies and, and by government. So, uh, you know, big tech companies are, are pouring massive amounts of investment into, into artificial intelligence and, and trying to be um, the leaders in, in those fields. Uh, and of course, governments are, are scrambling to, to try and, and, and keep up, as you say. Um, 
how do governments uh, introduce policies and regulations to ensure uh, data privacy? Um, ethics is, is a very big question. So again, um, there are questions around what data um, have these uh, artificial intelligence algorithms been, been trained on? And are there any biases uh, within that data that would cause a disadvantage to a particular uh, demographic or, um, or, or, you know, or, or a particular uh, make, make decisions that are biased in, in one way or another? Um, and so partially that's uh, you know, the, the role of government to come up with, with those regulations, uh, but it's also that there, there's a lot of technical innovation that needs to, needs to happen still and, and research um, that, that needs to be done. Um, and you know, that, that's, I think, where Australia can, can actually take the lead in uh, investing in some of that, that research that, that needs to be done and ensuring that we have sovereign AI capabilities.